Hello once again, my friends, and welcome back to The Morning Mindset. We are venturing through the Psalms, most recently in The Morning Mindset, and we are up to Psalm chapter 111. Now, just to set your expectation, if you're new to The Morning Mindset, I'm not going through every single Psalm. I'm just picking out some of the gems that shine most brightly to me in highlighting what they have to share with us. Now, Psalm 111 is one of those. It's a fairly short Psalm, only 10 verses. But it gives some great examples of what it means to praise the Lord and why we should be praising the Lord. And these are insights that I feel are helpful for us as we live each day of our lives to keep these kinds of things in mind. I'm just going to read the entire chapter, and then we'll come back and talk about some of it. It says, Praise the Lord. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart in the company of the upright in the congregation. Great are the works of the Lord, studied by all who delight in them. Full of splendor and majesty is his work, and his righteousness endures forever. He has caused his wondrous works to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and merciful. He provides food for those who fear him. He remembers his covenant forever. He has shown his people the power of his works in giving them the inheritance of the nations. The works of his hands are faithful and just. All his precepts are trustworthy. They are established forever and ever to be performed with faithfulness and uprightness. He sent redemption to his people. He has commanded his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All those who practice it have a good understanding. His praise endures forever. Now, as I was reading through that just now, it struck me almost as if the psalmist had sat down and just started writing out a bullet point list of the reasons the Lord is worthy of praise. I mean, he talks about God's works. He talks about his splendor and majesty and his righteousness. He talks about him providing food. He talks about him being gracious and merciful. I mean, all kinds of things. It's kind of a a smorgasbord of God's benefits and his wonderful characteristics. And what I notice in here are just a few verses that jump out at me, I guess because they resonate with the way I think about God and the way I want to be as a follower of Christ. The very first verse, I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart. Oh my, I feel so divided in my heart at times. I feel the pressures and stresses of the world pulling at me and making me feel like my focus is distracted from being wholly devoted to the Lord. But like David here, I want to be able to say, I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart. Is that you? Is that how you feel? I hope that it is. He goes on and he looks at all the wonderful things that God has done and who he is. And he's reminding himself by recounting these things that this is his God. This is his God who he loves and adores and wants to serve with his whole heart. And then that final verse, verse 10, is a verse we've heard often, but I think too often we don't know what it really means. It says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All those who practice it have a good understanding. What does it mean to practice the fear of the Lord, as David's talking about here? Well, I've often thought of it like a math problem. You know, when you start a math problem, you may have multiple steps to get to the solution that you're seeking. And there's an answer key the teacher will have that will tell you if you got the answer right. And if you did not get the answer correct... There could be many places in the procedure you used to solve the problem where you made a mistake. But here's the point I'm making by talking about math. If you get the very first step wrong, but then you work all the other processes right, your solution is still wrong. And I hear the psalmists when they say things like this, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. It is my prayer that all of us can learn to put the honor of God and the respect for His wishes and His will as first priority so that everything else follows out into a course of wisdom. Join me again tomorrow for The Morning Mindset.